Are you looking for a crossover EV, but you want something menacing, something spectacular? This here is the new Cupra Tavascan. It's, so to speak, the evil twin of the VW ID4, to specific the ID5, because this has the coupe shape, but the ID5 is not available in all markets. Here, the Cupra Tavascan, you can see in the front, very interesting, one of the first European cars that will come to the market that will also feature illuminated logo in the front and also more light work right here going through three-dimensional Cupra lettering. We know that from, from Porsche, for example, very interesting, a super premium and sporty look. Look at the black contrast in the lower part. And also in the headlamps, you have this split, basically. And when you indicate the turning indicators, it also replaces it in yellow. This color here, by the way, you can see these bronze shining nuances. It is called Century Bronze Matte, a matte color. You can also hear it. It is also fitting to the whole Cupra brand. Actually, they have always been setting it you know, on matte or like this bronze, silver colors and so on. The length is at four meters 64 actually. So it is approximately the size of the ID4. But like the ID5, it's continuing right here with the falling roof line, forming a very strong hip area. These are the biggest wheels available, 21 inch. It starts at 19 inch. And the crucial thing about this vehicle is also the tech inside. It comes either with rear wheel drive or with all wheel drive. And the rear electric motor is taken from the ID7, 286 horsepower. And this means that most probably this will achieve a range close to 500 kilometers or 300 miles because the motor being used in here has the double efficiency factor or half the consumption of the motor used so far in the ID3, ID4, ID5 and so on. So this can be really crucial for the range of this vehicle. The base wheels would start 19 inch, by the way, 20 inch, and then here the biggest 21 inch. These are the aerodynamic wheels. But however, you can also get for the most spectacular look, forged 21 inch wheels. And you can also see here these crossover claddings. They are painted in this high gloss black, but still a really large contrast to the vehicle color. Another important design element is this helmet design, like, like a visor on a motorcycle helmet. Here the glass area goes through the front and then you have these black A-pillars that everything then looks like you're wearing a motorcycle helmet, by the way that it doesn't get as rough as on a motorcycle. This will optionally feature the DCC, the dynamic chassis control, that's the adaptive suspension, and then you have you know, a wider span between comfort and sportiness. 183 inches, by the way, the length figure than in inches, and it ends right here. A super spectacular rear, and it almost looks like a supercar, doesn't it? Also, look at that, the light signature going all the way across. And when you hit the turning indicators or hazard lights here, then it has this cascading effect that looks even more spectacular. And look at that, the Illuminate Cooper logo. The logo itself always has this kind of tribal style, so to speak, it originated that Cooper was the premium brand or sporty brand of Seat, and then it became an own brand, and now it will basically outlive Seat, so there won't be any new Seat car models. Everything will be focused at Cooper now, like the three-dimensional lettering here. And it works that you have a, indeed a premium touch also because you can feel and see everything. The whole exterior of the uh, exterior design is very sculptural, also with the rear diffuser right here. And there will be the top model coming up also at the later stage, which will be called uh, VZ or VZ5, like we know from the Cupra Form and Tor, for example. This will then feature also all-wheel drive, so one electric motor in the rear, one electric motor in the front, then at 340 horsepower, and the acceleration figure for that will be 5.6 seconds, whereas the rear-wheel drive only version will be something probably like between 7 and 8 seconds in that region. One battery size, 77 kilowatt hours net. And we have experience as for the rear range from the ID7, where you can easily get 500 kilometers or 300 miles in good optimum conditions with the same battery, actually. This one here, a little bit less aerodynamic. However, the efficiency of the motor is really good, so we can expect good figures indeed. Finally, that's really good. And recharging here, AC, DC, and 10 to 80% state of charge in under 30 minutes. This is the key fob, standard with the high gloss black. We know it from a lot of VW, Seat, Cupra models and so on. Yeah, something new would be cool there. However, 
There's more spectacular stuff to come in the interior right now. Flush door handles. However, in a manual case, when every electronic would fail, you can also lift them up manually. It would be possible. This here, like a very early model prototype, but still, the door closing sound sounds really good. Here, when I open the door, you can also see these light nuances, how they change. Really interesting also here. Then inside of the doors, so they paid attention that there, they don't use too much black piano lacquer. For example, here, structured and soft touch. Then you have this brighter, let's say, aluminum style. And here, the copper accentuations again, typical for Cupra. Here, this is, as we know from the ID3 or ID4, that you just have two window levers. I would like to see four right there. That's also nice that we here, they have this blue nuance in the color and also soft touch again for your elbows. And this is probably one of the most spectacular EV interiors. A radical design, especially with the middle console, soon details to that. The steering wheel has the copper centrations here. On the right side, the Cupra button that you can directly hop to the sportiest mode. On the left side, then, you can cycle through the different driving modes. Here, these are hashtag capacitive BS buttons. So it's like one button field, and you can also use them as sliding or touch. There, I would like to see real buttons to control it easier while driving. The shifting lever here is at the steering column or behind it. Here for D, back for reverse and so on. And the most spectacular thing about this car is oh, definitely the seat. Comes with microfiber on the inside and leather on the outside. This seat and also steering wheel is all animal free. And you have this blue nose once again in here with the copper situations. And look at that, not just individual holes, but you know, all these small arrows inside. Beautiful detailed work indeed. This is the standard sport or half bucket seat. And optionally, there will be an even more sporty or accentuated bucket seat, the cup bucket seat. But I think this one here will also give you best comfort at the very same time. Let's hop inside. And with 1 meters 89 or 6 for 2, there is enough headroom left. There's also a version in here with the panoramic roof. It's a fixed one, but for hot days, you can also then close a shade when everything is properly powered. Seating position is actually fairly comfortable indeed. So it's sporty holding you tight, but it's also comfortable because you also have this soft microfiber cushion. Steering wheel in and out, up and down. And then you have small digital instruments right here. This is still a pre-production model. It says here TV for our uh, pre-production, basically. There's also still a Cupra Born, what we see here. But this, of course, will then have the final visualization when you get the vehicle. 5.3 inch, these are, by the way. This is your control central with the small digital instruments. Then head-up display, augmented reality will also be available. And then 15 inch screen like in the ID7 with finally backlit sliders right here. They're also quite responsive as you can see. I still prefer a manual climate knob, but for sliders they are now better usable and you can also see them at night actually. And also for example here the heated steering wheel, I like that function that it's really easily accessible because when you put something into the screen, at least it should be easily accessible. Also here, the seat heating um, that will work, of course, when the car is running properly. So I think I found a good solution to have an easy, straightforward access, although a lot has gone into the screen. Zoom more details to the screen. Here, look at that. This really spectacular, I would say, like, I don't know, how can we call it? I mean, it creates this flying console here. It's look. Yeah, it almost looks like, like in a spaceship, actually. Underneath, there's inductive charging pad to USB-C charger. And in front of that, there's soft touch all around here. Also, attach it with your knee, for example. Oh, I really went for the very fitting pant, uh, pant color. Yes, <laughs> biggest achievement for the day. And here, the adaptive cup holders, again, with the bronze accentuations. And then this armrest here has this split opening with more space, uh, way more space underneath. More software details here. You have this new menu and you can see here the whole system is more responsive. So it's a big upgrade indeed from existing cars before that. Not all functionalities are able to use in here yet. This is already in the Tavascan visualization here, for example, in this, you know, more chalk-like color. But overall, I think quite likable now. Charging here, for example, you can have different 
um, you know, bidirectional charging will also be possible at a later stage. Also plug and charge, for example. So there's a lot coming up. And also the preconditioning of the battery, for example, will also be possible. Then Apple CarPlay integration or Android Auto, also wireless, is available. And the new 12-speaker Sennheiser sound system, which has indeed um, a very you know, subtle, true sound. Uh, I really like the quality and it sounds like nothing else on the market. So they have like their own um, specific sound design now. So yeah, I like it. Why not going new ways also with new cooperation partners? And then you can also have some individualized tiles, for example, for a startup view or the car internal GPS directly at startup. So you can have that as, you know, as colorful or as subtle as you like. And here also the car internal map, they have finally put a proper CPU behind it now that's also responsive. Rear seating, we have the same cool microfiber leather red mix and also with this blue nose inside and just the inside of the rear doors. This is then hard pack, but at least it's structured. And you can also see here, once again, these small Cupra style like hood and they're even backlit a little bit. Um, yeah, that looks really spectacular indeed. But how much space do I have when I'm sitting in the front as a tall person? Let's take a look at that. There's enough legroom left, no problem at all. And do we have to pay a cost or a toll for the coupe? Hmm. I mean, it fits closely. It does work. My hair is hitting the ceiling just barely slightly. I would say it's okay. So you just shouldn't be like Michael Jordan uh, tall in, in the back. So then you would hit the head actually. But yeah, this works actually, and even for five. So there's using the EV platform here, dedicated EV, and in the middle part, it's also fairly comfortable. So unless you're not like six foot three or over one, way over 190, this is working with five tall adults indeed. But actually pretty cool and also cozy and comfortable. And folding down this cup holders, they're not adaptive though. And in the middle console, you have own seat heating. There will also be climate adjustment here in the lower part to USB C chargers. Trunk capacity is 540 liters. And what does it mean? Measurements here the width, yeah, approximately a meter of 40 inches. The length is like 93 centimeters or 37 inches. And here you can also have two third, one third split, but also the ski hatch here in between. And the total length then to the front seat as tall people would be driving would be 175 meters or 69 inches. Underneath here, you have some space for the charging cable, or you can also remove that whole um, layer here to get more trunk height. So a spectacular design exterior and interior for this new Cupra Tavascan, the evil twin for the ID4. I think it works very well and brings some unique character and also quite good that they have this more efficient rear electric motor. You can compare it to the ID7, the large sedan, or the direct brother, the ID4 with our videos right now.